गुरु का न श्री हूं Now, as I mentioned before, optimally, if you have the choice, for this session I would encourage you to lie down in the Shavasana, the corpse position. Even if you're perfectly capable of sitting upright and be relaxed, when you're emulating a corpse, physically you are as relaxed as you can possibly be. Establish a baseline of the deepest sense of relaxation you can maintain while still awake, clear, alert. So bring your awareness down. If you're lying down, this means two things. It means down horizontally, crosswise, down towards your feet, away from your head. Bring your awareness down into the torso, the hips, the legs, right down to the soles of the feet. But down also means, of course, vertically, and that is bring your awareness down to all these points of contact where your body touches or is held by. Your yoga mat, the top of your bed, and that is the base of your heels, the back of your calves, your thighs, buttocks, your back, your arms, the back of your head. Bring your awareness down vertically to this whole field of tactile sensation of the earth element, the sensations of firmness and solidity, the experience of being held and supported by whatever you're lying on. Let your awareness come to rest in those sensations of the earth element, literally grounding your awareness. Let your awareness rest in this non-conceptual field. There are no thoughts or labels in the space of tactile sensations. So let your awareness, like the space in which you descend, be silent, non-conceptual. And relax. Relax every muscle of your body, every one of the small muscles, the tiny muscles in your face. Soften your eyes. Let no part of your body be hard or contracted. No muscle needs to be tensed when you emulate a corpse. especially in the supine position, when you really deeply relax, you feel so comfortable, so much at ease physically, somatically. You find it quite easy to be still, unmoving apart from the movements associated with the respiration. But as I was taught by my primary yoga teacher 40 years ago, BKS Anger, when I trained in his yoga center, the 
the Shavasana is not just lying down as if you're taking a nap. It is a physical posture, but you're not performing that asana if you just space out or slip into rumination or fall asleep. Then you're just lying down, taking a nap. That's not an asana. To engage in this yogic posture, your awareness should be clear and alert and still and very present. So even though outwardly you look like you're just taking a nap or maybe dozing off, inwardly, wide awake, still, clear, vigilant. So rest your body-mind in a state that is deeply relaxed, still and vigilant. You're lying down at attention. When you have settled your body in its natural state, and bear in mind this can go deeper and deeper and deeper, then you're ready to settle the respiration in its natural rhythm. And you know it well, that there will be exhalation more and more deeply, subtly. Surrender your muscles to gravity. Still very much aware of the tactile sensations arising throughout the entire space of the body. And as you rest more deeply, you may feel some regions of the body melt and soften. Do so with every out-breath. Release and release muscular contraction and tension. Every out-breath is a natural time to release. And as you know well, release the breath. Like water flowing out of a glass that's been turned over on its side, it just flows out. And it will all flow out. Don't hold it back and don't push it out. And do be silent and very attentive, especially as you come to the end of exhalation, every single time. With every exhalation, more and more deeply, subtly, surrender your muscles to gravity. more and more deeply. Surrender your muscles to gravity.
And we know the purpose of settling the respiration in its natural rhythm is to inwardly settle the speech of the mind, the internal chit-chat, the rumination, the commentary, settle the speech of the mind in its natural state of effortless silence. And so with every exhalation, whatever thoughts, memories, images may have come to mind involuntarily, release them. Release them right into the space of the mind. Let them vanish into that space. It's almost as if you were cleaning a room, like a kitchen with a broom, and you sweep out the dust, and you sweep out the dust, and you sweep out the dust. Every outbreath. Sweep out the dust of the mind, the noise, the chit-chat, and return to silence as you come to the end of the outbreath. Return to silence as you come to the end of the opera. more and more deeply. Surrender your muscles to gravity. Return to silence as you come to the end of the opera. And as Leda Blinga, the great Dertun, tells us, you have settled your respiration in this natural rhythm. 
You've done what needs to be done in terms of this preliminary practice of settling body, speech, and mind. You've done what needs to be done when the breath flows quietly, inaudibly, so relaxed, so gentle. This rhythmic flow of the breath in and out. It may be long, it may be short, but it's so relaxed, so fluid, that you can't hear the body breathing. And then we move to the subtlest phase, a modality or an interpretation of mindfulness of breathing, tracing back to the great Indian master, Pandit Bodhisattva Siddha Asanga, living some 1500 years ago, wherein you rest, but the light of your awareness illuminates the entire somatic field. As you attend closely to it, single-pointedly to it, resting in the stillness of awareness, you observe the movements throughout the body, especially those correlated with the in-and-out movements of the breath, the rhythm of the respiration. Observe your whole body breathe. And observe the sensations, the fluctuations of energy throughout that field as the body breathes in and out. And in this phase of shamatha, among the three qualities of relaxation, stillness, and clarity, we emphasize overwhelmingly the first of these three. Now is the time to deepen and sustain a profound sense of ease and relaxation. With this full body awareness, awareness of the sensations of the respiration throughout the body, with every exhalation, relax more and more deeply. Every out breath, Let go of muscular tension. Let go of the breath all the way through to the end without pushing it out. Without trying to prolong the exhalation. Don't try at all. Just let the breath flow out. In every out breath, continue releasing thoughts, even the subtlest thoughts. Release them. Return to silence.
in this phase of shamatha, as in all phases of shamatha, we seek to strike a balance, a middle way. And in this initial phase, the balance to be cultivated is to relax more and more and more deeply without losing the clarity, the vividness, the acuity of your awareness with which you began. So at this point, we're not striving to stabilize the mind. We're not trying to develop greater clarity. But just whatever degree of wakefulness, clarity of mind you brought to this session at the very beginning, don't lose that. Normally, when we relax more and more deeply, we become drowsy, spaced out, quite possibly fall asleep. So that's just taking a nap. That's not shamatha. But here indeed we do release, relax more and more deeply, but without losing the clarity with which we began. There's the challenge, breath by breath. Let's continue practicing in silence. Every out-breath, let go of muscular tension, 
and every outbreath continue releasing thoughts, even the subtlest thoughts. Release them. Return to silence. In this way you allow the mind to settle and over time dissolve right down into its relative ground, the substrate consciousness, when the mind will have settled in its natural, unconfigured state. 